In order to help illustrate the analysis phase of software development, we should actually talk about a problem and do an analysis for it. And the problem that I want to solve is a fairly simple example of a bank. So the bank has accounts in it, it has customers that it has to keep track of, and so we want to think about how we want to solve that problem, what the different pieces to it are, and what a user can do in interacting with it. Now, analysis can be done just by writing prose, but a lot of times when we're doing software development, we like to interact with tools that are more visual, so that they communicate ideas more quickly to someone who, you know, we want to tell what we're doing. If you give them a 10-page paper that describes everything the software is going to do, in some ways you need that, but that requires a lot more effort to read. It's also helpful to have certain things put in, in pictorial form, and there's actually a type of diagram that is specifically intended to do analysis, and that's called the UML use case diagram. So UML, as is listed right here, so I'm using a program here called draw.io. It integrates nicely with uh, Google Docs, and it has the functionality that I generally need for drawing uh, a lot of my programming diagrams. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language, and it's a set of actually quite a few different diagram styles that can be used to aid with object-oriented uh, software development. Most of them aren't used all that extensively, but there are a few that are. And for the process of analysis, the primary one is what's called the use case diagram, where you are literally just diagramming out what are the different use cases, how is this software going to be used. And so this tool has a set of different things that are commonly put inside of different UML diagrams. This actually goes more than just the use cases. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a nice little box here that represents our software system. In this case, it's going to be our bank. And we have a user for our bank, which in a use case diagram is represented by a little stick figure. We'll call them our bank's customer. And then the different things that the customer can do with our software are represented by little bubbles that are the individual use cases. So what can our customer do? Well, our customer could open an account. That's one of our, our use cases that we'd like to have. To show that the customer can do that, we typically draw a line connecting those. And the line style that's normally used for this is just basically a straight line that that connects them. What else can our user do? Well, if they can open account, they can probably get rid of it too. So how about we also have a close account? And this customer is able to do this. Now this might seem a little bit pedantic to have each of these with this customer, but in a larger piece of software, there might actually be other users. So for example, you have the customer that can interact with this software system. There might also be an employee of the bank. There might be the manager at the bank. And there could be different types of activities that, that each one of them does. But this is just a good way for us to organize our thoughts about the different functionality that we want to have in there. So if we can open accounts and we can close accounts, what are the things we can do with our accounts? Well, standard things we can do with accounts include stuff like make a deposit or withdraw money. One other thing that I want to add in just to make this a little bit more object oriented and possibly a little bit larger is I want my customers to have an address. And so if we're going to store their address, we should also have the ability for the customer to change their address. Okay, That's probably enough for our purposes in these videos. We could add more. In fact, the textbook goes through and includes several other actions, but 
they would take they would take longer to both put into the diagram and to put into the software that we're going to write and so we won't go ahead and include those this is sufficient for us to demonstrate the primary concepts that we want to so this is our analysis phase once again and we are using a UML use case diagram to go through and think about what it is that we actually want to solve what our software is going to do for us and in reality we would probably would pair this with some pros we'd have a description of what each one of these does that gives more details because the idea is that we want so when we go to the next step in the process we have a clear image of what it is that we are designing our software to be able to do